welcome to how to write a research paper using Logos Bible software. Now you may be wondering, what is the purpose of a webinar? Well, first we're going to provide training for Logos Bible software. We're also gonna provide training so that you can study the topic for yourself. We'll provide biblical insights related to topic when appropriate, and then we'll provide materials so you can equip yourself and others. Now, tonight's topic is not really a specific biblical topic, so we won't have those kind of biblical insights that we normally would have. The topics tonight will be, right now we're in the introduction. We're going to look at recommended but not required resources. There's only a couple there. We're going to look at the Logos Bible software tools for research. You have to have a handle on these tools in order to effectively write a research paper. Then we're going to talk about the essential skills that you need to know when using a word processor. We'll give you some tools and equipping to help you choose a topic when you have a choice. We'll show you how to identify subtopics. We'll show you how to bring it all together and integrate your research into the paper. And then we'll talk about how to convert the document into something that you can share. Also, keep in mind that we record the webinars and make them available for download. We're a little bit behind, but we're starting to catch up. So uh, keep an eye on your email as we begin to roll out the previous webinars. We give them away at a discount of 50%. So that's $4.99 for the great value of one to two hours of training. And if you still haven't purchased the training bundle, this is an absolute must-have. It is the most comprehensive training in the planet and uh, in more than just training where other training stops at the features which of course we cover great in depth we go even beyond that we have over 200, 282 book overviews teaching you about the books in your library and then also the third cd the green one we're actually going to show you how to apply logos for the purpose of studying the bible preparing a message etc so you get all that together combined in either the Logos 4 with 300 videos, 17 plus hours of training, or in the Logos 5, 500 videos, 21 plus hours. And of course, we're going to give you that extra 50% off discount. So take advantage of that. Visit learnlogos.com forward slash buy now to learn more. And also you'll get a complete, you can see a complete table of contents of all, of all the videos. So that'll show you how comprehensive this really is. And you can download it, order on the DVD, or do both. Don't forget to check out learnlogos.com forward slash events for all the upcoming training events this year. I do have a special event with an early bird special that's ending very soon. It's how to study the Bible inductively. It's going to be six sessions, updated Logos 5. Uh, you're going to get a syllabus. There'll be homework that I'll be personally grading. So it's a, it's a more of a discipleship model. Uh, I'll be hands-on, personalized training. You don't have to travel anywhere. You can do it right from your house. We're going to help you save time, go deeper in the Word, be more accurate. There's the dates. Uh, I'm a former pre, uh, employee of Precept Ministries. I've led several precept studies. So we're really going to focus on the inductive method. And if you have in the past taken my or bought my inductive training, there's an additional discount of $25 off. You'll see that when you go visit the page learnlogos.com forward slash inductive. So you can get an additional discount beyond even the early bird special if you've attended or if you've purchased the Logos inductive Bible study training video. So take advantage of that, of that early bird special that's going to be ending shortly. And we'll be sending an email out probably this week as one last reminder. Now let's do some preliminary setup so that we have optimized Logos for the purpose of writing a paper. So let's go to tools and let's go to program settings right away. Now the first thing you've got to make sure is talk to your professor. They probably have already clearly articulated this. It's probably in the homework assignment somewhere uh, and it'll tell you the citation style, what format the footnotes and the bibliography need to follow. If you see at the top here, we've got citation style and you'll notice that mine is selected with Turabian. So if we go ahead and click Turabian, you will see the other major styles you can choose from. So if you've been frustrated in the past where you've been copying and pasting and then manually going in and changing it to fit your particular style, those days are over. Simply locate tools, program settings, identify your citation style, select it from the list, and now everything will follow that format. And that will save you an immense amount of time as well. Also, another new feature that's going to come in handy to understand is the new Smart 
text selection feature. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to left click. Now notice as I drag, Logos isn't highlighting one letter at a time. Instead, it's highlighting the words. And if I now drag down, see how it's grabbing words and sentences and so forth? Now it's grabbing whole verses at a time. Let's do this with a book. So let's grab just uh, any kind of kind of narrative book, uh, like a commentary. And we'll just jump here to the middle of the book. All right, so here we have a paragraph. Now watch again as I select the text. I'm going to left click. And again, notice how Logos is grabbing sentences and phrases and so forth. Now this can be really handy, but what if you want to make a break somewhere in there? All right, you can certainly try to move it around and get exactly what you want, but this can be troublesome at times. So what you want to do is know how to disable or permit precise selection on the fly. And the way you do this is by pressing the Alt key. So let me demonstrate. I'm going to left click and I'm going to drag and I'm going to click the Alt button now and hold down the Alt key. Notice now I'm only moving one letter at a time and it's very precise. Wherever my mouse is, that's what's getting selected. So just hold down that Alt key and that'll give you the precise selection capabilities that you need. Very helpful. Uh, Nathan did not make a remark that on the Mac the Alt key is the Option key. Correct. And uh, if you look for that ALT button, that's usually where it is. Some of the newer Macs, like the MacBook Air, do show Alt button on the Option key. But I do appreciate that tip just in case people don't have that on their keyboard. Okay, so those are some preliminary settings that you've got to have in place before you start writing your research paper. Now let's jump to uh, some more settings, the bibliography tool. So let me go ahead and close down the program settings by clicking on the X in the tab. And to locate the bibliography tool, we go to Documents, and we go to that first item in the list, Bibliography. Now the bibliography tool is a wonderful tool that Logos has provided for us who are writing research papers. Now notice right away at the right we can choose the style. If you forget you can always go back and just click it and I'm going to choose Turabian. So be aware of these opportunities to select the citation style. Now what is the bibliography tool? Well first let's begin with the name. I typically will name this if I'm studying a passage the name of the passage. If I have a paper and I have a topic on that paper I would name it after that. So I'm just going to say uh, Saved by Grace. I'm going to open up a couple books. Let's open up a Bible, uh, a commentary, and, and what I'm going to do is I'm going to click on uh, a couple things here. Let's select some text and then I'm going to click Add and you'll notice that it gives me the option when I click on Add, Add Citations from Selected Text. So I'm going to go ahead and click that menu option. And instead of copying and pasting the biblical text, it's smart enough to recognize what book I'm selecting from. And so now I have a bibliography started with one of my resources. It's that easy. Let's go to a commentary. This time, in fact, let's close down the New American Standard and let's just leave open the Bible Knowledge Commentary. So I'm going to go back to my bibliography, choose Add, and I'm going to choose All Open Resources. Now you'll notice I get my, my personal book in here, so let me delete that. To delete any entry in the bibliography, you just float your mouse, locate the red circle with the white X at the right, click that, and you have removed that citation. Notice that by clicking all open resources, Logos put in the bibliographic information for my commentary. Now why am I stopping here and showing this particular tool? When I was in seminary, uh, and, and this was back in 2000, 2005, we had to produce, you know, a bibliography with 50 or more resources. And this is way before, I mean, Logos was available then, but it didn't have these kind of capabilities. So back then I used a tool called EndNote. You might be familiar with that. What it allowed me to do was log into my library, that is my, my physical library at the seminary, the campus, and download all the bibliographic books by simple searches and then with a press of the button I could generate a bibliography in moments. So what took me literally 30 minutes to do a 50 to 75 bibliography paper, other guys who were doing it 
one by one, hand typing, was taking them three to four hours. Plus, it was filled with errors and so forth, and they, they lost points. I do not want you to fall into that trap. So, as you're using Logos, just select some text, keep your bibliography document open, and just keep adding the resource as you're doing this. This will save you a ton of time. And when you're ready to print it out, watch this. So let's go to the resource panel at the top left, and we'll go to print export. And then notice you've got two options. The default is just a standard document. But for your paper, you're going to need to check bibliography only. Notice again that Logos gives you the option to choose the citation style. So take advantage of that. So we'll, so we'll leave it at Turabian. And now we have it ready to go. Notice at the right, we can copy the clipboard and then we could just simply paste that into our Word document. So I'm going to choose copy the clipboard. I'm going to erase the content of my current Word document. I'll click on paste and there's my bibliography. Notice that it does add this piece of information at the end. So make sure you get rid of that. Let me show you a couple other features you need to be aware of with the bibliography tool. Notice that there is a sort button here at the top. Make sure when you're all done with your bibliography that you click that. Very important because notice now that the author Wolverd comes first because authors who are named come first and then unnamed authors come last. But when you sort it, that's how Logos is going to do it. Now if you need to change the order, the easiest way to do that is to left click on any entry and drag it up to the top and you'll see a little line and then you can move it. So you have complete control on what the order is for each bibliographic entry. Don't forget you can convert your bibliography into a collection. So let's say you are studying a topic and then you want to do some more research later. Well you could save the whole bibliography as a collection and then come back later and do searches against those books. Very helpful feature. Can you convert a collection to a bibliography? Uh, going the other way, that's a good question. And yes, you can. Just go up, open up your collection and do save as bibliography. So it can go back and forth. Great question. So very important that you have this bibliography document created. I think that answers pretty much most of the questions. You can do some notes in here if you find that's necessary. That's really helpful. But notice that you can add citations from selected text, open resources, another bibliography, a clippings document, a collection, a clipboard, and even from your history. That can be really useful as well. Let's move now to clippings. So I'm going to leave my bibliography document open, and now I'm going to go to documents, clippings. So I'm going to go ahead and click on that. Notice what Logos did. The text that I selected automatically got placed in there. I didn't have to do any copy or any extra work here. In addition to that, it gives me a link back to the book so that I can return there with one click. It gave me the section title, in this case, Revelation 21, 14 through 16. It gave me a date and time stamp. Then in the bottom, it added a tag. Whenever you use a Bible passage, that passage is added as a tag, and you can create your own tags. Tags are searchable and will help you sort information later. And then we have the notes. So if there's some additional information you want to add, you can put it there. In the bottom right corner, if you click the arrow, you get the bibliographic information. Notice again, you have the option to choose your citation style. And if you decide to just one-off copy this bibliographic uh, citation, just click copy, go into Word, and you're good to go. To return to the main information, just go back to the bottom right corner, click on the arrow, and it'll take you right back. Think of these as the old-fashioned 3 by 5 index cards that we would take to the library. For those of us who are a little bit older in the audience, and we would take these cards to the library and write all the information that we needed so that we could generate a bibliography. Now, after a while, you're going to have quite a few clippings. I recommend keep all the clippings in one document unless you're starting to change the topic. And then, but again, you can use the tagging at the bottom to identify subtopics. That way, all the clippings are still in one document, which will come in handy later, and you still have the ability to search on a particular subtopic. Now, let's go to the resource panel and see what our printing options are. Now, before we do that, though, notice that we can save as a bibliography. 
So we can go through and clip all the information we want during our research, and when we're ready, we can generate a bibliography. That is huge.